Hello everybody. I, uh, I'm sorry, it won't be really advanced in, uh, in physics or anything like that. Um, I was asked by uh, Michael to do a presentation to be representative of what we do on, uh, in the industry. And you found out that it's really different what we do in industry so to what you would do most of your time. Um, first, I will try to present uh, who, who is Bartington, or what type of company is Bartington, to give you an, um, an idea of what, uh, what you can expect. And I will present one particular application. That application was presented, um, was to, uh, a set of experiments that was taken, uh, that was taken uh, in December uh, last year. And that was linked to an incident in South Asia that happened um, last year as well. I won't tell you which one. I will let you guess. But um, <laughs> it did happen that after that incident, there's quite a lot of money that was put on, uh, on some uh, research and oh, some tests and new, uh, new implementation of sensors. Um, here we go. So yes, so challenge in designing customized flux gate magnetic field sensor is... I'll explain further the title later on. Um, so where we are, we, we've been incorporated since 1985. Um, we've got 2.5 million turnovers. This year is going to be 2.8 to 3 million. Uh, we're located in Oxford. Uh, the company itself is a small company. We're only 40 of us. On 40 of us, we do sell worldwide and quite a lot of products in lots of uh, companies. Uh, most of, well, some of you will definitely know us. But we are not a big company. Uh, we are specialised in the design and manufacture of flux gate magnetometer, linear flux gates only, and magnetic susceptibility instrumentation. That's purely because of, for historical reason, it wasn't originally a choice of technology. It was just up and that uh, where we started working on. And we now have a worldwide network of agents and distributors in 90, but 90 countries. We we sell to to mostly all, uh, most navies around the world. Uh, most research labs, most universities, etc., uh, etc. Et so we're quite well represented on that as, in that aspect. To give you an order of, uh, an order of idea of where we sell to, um, the biggest part of it is still to universities. Uh, universities, and in loads of aspects of universities, can be physics department, environmental science, uh, material research, uh, a bit of everything, uh, archaeology, really everywhere, um, but mostly related to uh, geoscience and near-surface geophysics. Uh, physics and medical science mostly linked to MRI, MRI installations, survey before installation, and uh, as well as scanning all uh, non-magnetic part of an MRI before it's being installed. Uh, and we are... Um, the two parts are actually quite increasing is the oil, gas, and mineral exploration. As you all know, we're doing more research to find some, more, some, some, uh, some minerals and oil and gas everywhere, and we're involved on that. Um, and in defense, uh, defense aerospace, we've been involved for quite a long time with defense and aerospace, uh, but loads of um, research is now, or, or projects are coming to an end. Therefore, people start buying more sensors for the implementation of the project, and therefore that's growing quite uh, massively. I would, I would think that this year, for instance, will double between this year and last year. Um, and in industry, uh, this is quite small, uh, mostly because Flexgate is not the first sensor um, industry would be used. Uh, all effects and other type of sensor would be used first. Um, so we do, we do normal sensors, and we do uh, as well as customized sensors. Uh, you've seen uh, we worked so on the gradiometer with uh, HAL and NPL. Uh, we, did quite a, we do quite regularly sensors for, for the defense, uh, defense market, uh, because defense is mostly the, the, the people who've got money. Um, and uh, so we have collaborative work, and uh, in general for all uh, hostile when I say when we say hostile environments, we're talking about uh, space, we're talking deep under, uh, under the sea, uh, deep underground, and high temperature, uh, and high shock. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of what the company, the type of company we are. We, are, we, are not, uh, we don't have much research. When you say research and development, we do mostly development, and that's why we're collaborating, and that's why we're 
we wanted to be collaborators on, 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 that, on that particular project from, the, from Europe because we, we don't have the research potential and we need to still collaborate with universities to do the research for us. We will do the development and we're more concentrating on trying to get the sensor right for the customer. And it's quite interesting to, that's why I'm, I'm going to talk about that surveillance application. It's because this, it's an application that's come more and more, uh, it's been talked about more and more. And um, you will see that the problem we've got is a problem you would have had 40 years ago. Uh, but these days that's what we're implementing. Um, this particular requirement, as I said, follows that in, following that incident, uh, and following that the fact that the incident was on the side of a border, it was a requirement for installing more and more sensors on borders. Uh, those sensors include magnetics. Uh, the reason for inserting magnetics is uh, mainly because any animals will not carry weapons. Uh, and when you do optics and um, microphone and uh, other type of sensing, which is the, the most common one, uh, you can't tell if it's a threat or not, so they generally try to couple that with magnetics to be able to, uh, to find out if it's actually a threat, uh, a threat or not. Uh, and that requirement was to detect a man with a gun at 10 meters. Uh, it's quite interesting, it's the same requirement we would have had about uh, 15 years ago on the border between Northern Ireland and South Ireland. Uh, but at the time we couldn't do it. Uh, as Bartington instruments, I'm talking about in general, and that's uh, this time it's another border somewhere else, but the problem is exactly the same. It's detecting people crossing with weapon borders where you can't have patrol uh, 24 hours a day. Um, and the challenge in what we do, it's not especially the design. The design, when you know what you get, you've got to design, is not too bad actually. It's to find out what you, what you can do, what you can't do, in our case, at uh, industry level. Um, in that case, it was to detect a man at, with, uh, at, again, at 10 meters. So the question now, can we translate um, the problem in the magnet into a magnetic one? Uh, are you all going to tell me, yes, it's really easy. You've got a gun. You're just looking at signature. You're just putting that in model, trying to find out what, what it is at 10 meters, and you will get your solutions. Uh, yes, it is. I, I, I would totally agree with that, th that way, so we should be able to do it. Uh, how does it translate into specifications? Uh, that will involve other things than just the magnetics. And can we fulfill it? If we can do the, the other things and the magnetics, we should be able to fulfill it. Uh, after the interesting question for any industry is the need to detect a soldier with a gun at 10 meters in a field. It's not to detect a man at 10 meters uh, with a gun. Um, at the end of the day, you need to work. Uh, you can have all the sensors you want in the world. If uh, at the end of your system doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not especially your responsibility, uh, especially our fault, but we need to make sure that everything is in place, that it will work. And that's what we look quickly. Uh, so, and mostly in there is, is an environment in which it's going to be used is suitable. Uh, if all the things we don't control is done suitably, and can we still fulfill it? Um, so, yes, to give you uh, the idea of the presentation on that aspect is just to give you an idea of what, what those problems are in the, in, the, in the industry. In our case, it was simple. Uh, we had um, the customer came in and we told them, yes, we can definitely do it. We can measure a variation of 2 nanotesla at 10 meters, uh, 2 nanotesla at a point, which is about what uh, a gun is going to give uh, at 10 meters. But they say, we don't believe you, show us. So, what we did is we went to, we asked our friends in Kinetic if we could use their labs in the non-magnetic environments and try to measure someone that would um, help as well from the, the local constabulary to provide weapons and try to get them working in a, in a known fashion toward the sensor and see when we could detect them. Um, which is perfectly uh, simple. The type of equipment we use, you've got, uh, you know, some of you will recognize that one, Smago 3, and the Spectrum Mag, which is a 24 bit uh, digital, um, digital, uh, digitizer. Digitizer? Digitizer. The place we did the trial is in, uh, in, in Portlandville. Uh, you've got the installation from Kinetic there where they calibrate compasses. Uh, if you need any further <laughs> questions, suggest you ask our representative from Kinetic today. Um, and it's at the end of this island. Uh, I believe, as I've been told that, uh, during the break, that actually they were based here before in Bushy House, uh, and they have now decided to go a lot further afield to be uh, far from everybody else, uh, which is at the end of, uh, of that uh, island. Um, 
So yes, so that's what we did, and that's the result we had. Um, we did few guns, because obviously we, when we did all the trick down there, we decided not to do only one gun, but we did multiple guns. And that's a big gun. Uh, you see a variation of, uh, of, three, of three nanotesla. To explain quickly, uh, the, the peak you see is not the person, it's, it's when the, the, the gun is moved from one axis to the other side. That's very easy to detect. Uh, and that's about three nanotesla. So in general, uh, you will see after I explain the distances, but that the further afield you are, and that the closer you are. Uh, a big gun is, a, in that case, it was a, a brain gun, so it's a, a nice big machine gun. I uh, wouldn't go further carrying things because it's quite, it's quite an heavy one. Uh, when we say normal gun, we went for a K47 because the most common one, and we redid the test, and you see that the signature is, um, is lower. Further afield, closer when you, you get the variation is slightly higher up. There's a, there's a reason for that is um, an AK-47 has got a metal uh, shoulder support which makes it a really nice long piece of metal. Um, so this is why the variation is quite big. If we limit that to normal uh, recent weapons without the shoulder support, it's becoming a lot shorter piece of metal which is about 40 centimeters. It's basically just a barrel and then the signature is a lot lower, you will see later. So the result we had was at 10 meter we get, um, we get the signature, so therefore we should be able to detect someone just moving about at that, at that level. So that would be the answer to us. So that's why we send them to them. And they say, we still don't believe you, we want to come to see you, and you'll have to do it in front of us. We make the things a bit more interesting. So to, to summarize that particular part, uh, we can detect and get them, no problem at all. AK-47 is about 250, uh, 250 picotesla, 10 meter in rotation. It's not a problem at all. Uh, how does that translate into specification? Uh, as long as you can have a noise level at 100 picotesla and between 0.2 hertz and 10 hertz, we should be fine. Can we fulfill it? Yes. Now, they came to see us and we wanted to do the test with them. So we went into a field like anybody else and decided, we looked on the map, and we went there with the car, and looked, oh, we can access it today, easily, it's far from everybody, nobody's going to disturb us, we'll do the measurements. The first point with measurement we did, we did in point A, the second measurement we did in point B, that is the reason why we moved. When we did the measurements, that was the day. There's a nice haystack, a bit of an edge, and nothing else, <laughs> and plenty of field. Brilliant, we thought. So we did the test. And actually, that person moving one way and coming back, which is, you can see, uh, our friend Ludovic doing it. Uh, the only problem is the fact that that's quite noisy. I mean, if we, if we got variation of one nano Tesla, randomly was really cold as well that day, and miserable, and anyway, uh, we couldn't do anything. So we had our customer turning up, and we actually had nothing. Uh, we could say, uh, we're really sorry, but with those noise figures outside, it's not a chance we're going to see anything. Uh, because it's just too high. So that's what I was trying to show in my presentation, is a real-life experience. It happened that if you do put that in Google Earth, there's a really nice metal building sitting actually there. So obviously they remove the top, they don't remove the bottom bit of it. Uh, we didn't see that uh, <laughs> at the time. Well, when, I, when I noticed that afterwards, uh, well, because we went home and tried to find out what was the problem, if it was a problem with the sensor, if it was a problem with the acquisition system and everything, when we, after looking at it, uh, we just kind of moved away. That's point B uh, for the little story. Uh, in general, uh, from that aspect, Google is really good because you can, get, you can know what's happened in the past. Um, so that's uh, the, second, the second place we went to on the edge of the forest, a lot further away. That's the type of noise we got. It's, it's quite important to explain that w the first time the customer turned up, they came up with a presentation of what they were trying to do with a presentation, all the sensor will be set up and everything. It, as we didn't have any say on that. So we did about similar, we put the sensor there. As you can see, you get quite a noisy environment. Again, you get one on the Tesla, some fancy peak and everything. Um, one thing you never do in, make, in, uh, in magnetics, particularly if you do DC and AC, is to put a magnetometer above the ground without fixing into a point that is static. If you've got a bit of wind, or anything like that, the sensor is going to move. So what you can see actually is a bit of the wind when it was going one way or the other. This is what I'm talking about. The customer came in and just said, we will put a group of sensor, put it on top of a pipe, point it, plant it in the floor, in the ground, and hope for the best. It just doesn't work. It's not a chance. So the first thing we do is we did is just to take the magnetometer, put it in a hole in the ground. 
we have fixed temperature, or pseudo fixed temperature, and we don't have the problem with the wind with the magnetometer moving all over, everywhere. Um, and that's what we did. Uh, we did the same, same type. We, we just we passed by and passed close by and, and come back the other way. Uh, and we can see proper, uh, proper peak uh, without a problem. I have to say, the, 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 the barrel in that case wasn't degaussed. We didn't assume that the barrel was degaussed. You could, uh, that's what we're going to talk about it afterwards, you, you could get a lot less signature from any piece of metal if you degauss it. Um, but that basically works. Uh, in summary, uh, so if you, if you go to the next one, I, to summarize, the environment is suitable, yes. In general, the environment is always suitable as long as, uh, as, long as you can control it. Uh, it's worth knowing in empty environments so as to control your environment, you've seen that. Uh, can, we can we fulfill the requirement? Yes, if you can control the system, will it work? Again, it depends. It depends on a lot of things. These things are generally installed by people that don't have a clue about magnetics. Uh, and the other thing is, if we want to, uh, to expand a bit that, is the fact that um, it's going to be next to a microphone. Uh, that's not particularly good for having a magnetic sensor next to a microphone, in general. Uh, and that's something we'll have to be addressed as well. Uh, are we going to manage to shift the, the, the magnetometer from the microphone next to it? Um, but in general, uh, that's a typical requirement where if you put a magnetometer every five meters uh, at different uh, parts, you should be able to detect a man with a gun. Now, the soldier part is an interesting bit. Uh, we know that in the army, we can easily demine a mine. Oh, we can easily. <laughs> we can demine a mine. We can take a, a diver going next to a sea mine and demine it without exploding. Uh, hopefully we can. <laughs> it would be good if we keep doing that. Uh, but that's another story. Um, but we can. That means that any person that wants want to go into a field of magnetometer should be able to pass through. And this is why you get multiple sensor acoustic and things. is because what you want to do is to limit the possibility of a soldier to go through without being noticed. The other thing is, uh, everything you've seen is um, a, a piece of metal is going to rotate or move in certain direction. If the person is moving straight toward in parallel 10 meters or in one direction and is not facing north-south but east-west, it's another story. Therefore, there's this, um, how we place the sensor on everything. So the, what I was trying to say is the fact our job in industry in general is we rely on you to do all the calibration, all the design of new sensors and everything, and we're trying to take that and put it in real life situation and try to explain to people how they need to install them and, and hopefully we keep that collaboration, that collaboration going to everybody's benefit. Uh, I was asked a question by Michael when you see that presentation the first time. What does happen when you do it in a, in a town? Uh, I would suggest to read a paper which is more academic than my presentation. Uh, it was done by Eliel Weiss and his team in, uh, in Israel. And they took one of our sensors and they put it in a checkpoint. Uh, in a checkpoint, in a normal checkpoint. And trying to detect, and they were, we were only detecting any piece of metal. Uh, we're talking about knife, uh, any, any type of metal starting from knife. Um, successfully. Um, so that's quite, if you're interested in reading more about that type of application, they did a really good job of it, not going to a field, just trying it out, but actually doing a proper, um, proper paper on it. Um, and that's it, that's my presentation. <laughs>